Good morning and welcome to this Zoom worship at Bethesda. We may be experiencing some technical difficulties with the spotlighting, so if you can be patient, uh, you may in turn uh, see me uh, rather than others that are highlighted. This is the feast of the baptism of our Lord uh, with Eucharist on Zoom, live streamed and recorded for Bethesda's YouTube channel. If you do not already have a bulletin from the E! News sent yesterday, there is a link to the bulletin in the chat box. Shortly, we will continue with a Thanksgiving for baptism. If you have a bowl of water nearby or a bowl that you can put water in nearby, you may wish to sign yourself with water at the conclusion of this rite. As we are offering communion in this online forum, please have a bread or a cracker and wine or juice available. If you have only bread or wine, God's grace is sufficient in sharing uh, bread or wine only. This has been a momentous week in this country's electoral process, uh, severely marred by the violent and disturbing interruption of the Congress at the Capitol and taking this time to offer a uh, pastoral message. We are still reeling from this event while also continuing to manage the rise in coronavirus outbreaks throughout the globe. In addition to the variety of responses and potential courses of action uh, after Wednesday, Wednesday's events, ELCA presiding Bishop Eaton has joined heads of churches from the National Council of Churches in the US in an open letter urging President Trump to resign from office for his part in instigating the crowds of his supporters and to encourage additional means to remove him from office. As a faith leader in good conscience, I have added my name uh, to that letter. Uh, whether or not it produces the result, I felt like it was an important uh, document to add my name to. I have written additional reflections on this week's uh, assault on our democratic process in this week's E! News and on Facebook, and we'll be hosting a Zoom meeting tonight at seven o'clock to invite additional a communal conversation and prayer. In my preparation for this morning's gathering, I was particularly moved by the writing of Nathan Mitchell, a liturgical theologian retired from the University of Notre Dame, who offers reflections on the significance of Jesus' baptism for those of us who live in its wake. Here are his comments. We are urged to move quickly beyond the intimate scene of Jesus' birth toward the more challenging vision of his baptism. In short, we are asked to move in the direction of life itself from concern for intimacy to concern for community. A Christian parish becomes its best self when it accepts the challenge of community. The parish community as the real expression of a local church cannot limit its attention to the search for justice and intimacy of its own members. It must be prepared to take up the cross, standing against evil and injustice wherever they exist in the world. There is ultimately only one mystery Christians celebrate, the Paschal mystery, Jesus dying and rising in a new human community. In this new year, in this time after the epiphany of our Lord and on this feast, of the baptism of our Lord. I invite you to continue with me to pursue genuine community with all its wonder, joy, and challenge. And let us recommit to the mystery of living into a new community and a renewed earth through the Paschal mystery in our common life together. Now let us enact community in the best way we know as we give thanks for baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our life, and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism.
We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as beloved community and children, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life, and above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Let us pray. Holy God, creator of light and giver of goodness, your voice moves over the waters. Immerse us in your grace and transform us by your spirit that we may follow after your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and a darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe, Ascribe to the Lord, Lord the glory, the glory of you God's name. name. Worship the, the Lord, Lord in the beauty of holiness. holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters, and God of glory, the God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice, the voice of, the of the Lord is a powerful voice. voice. The, the voice, voice of, of the Lord, Lord is, a is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord, the Lord makes Lebanon, Lebanon skip like, like a cat. cat. And, and mount mount her, her, like, a young, like a wild ox. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice, the voice of the Lord, the Lord shakes, shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness. The, Lord shakes the, wilderness of the voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forests bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying, Glory! The Lord, the Lord sits, sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king, king forevermore. O Lord, give us give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. Second reading is from the book of Acts. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, into what were you then baptized? And they answered, into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptized baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 of them. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside 
and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Nine years ago, on this very feast day, this community of faith at Bethesda gave witness to the power of the Spirit in the life of the baptized. Into the fonts cleansing waters, oiled into the Spirit of Christ's overturning the forces of oppression and evil, Greta Lee emerged into new life with us, and she has given me permission to share this memory. It was a powerful day as all baptisms and confirmations and ordinations and rites of healing and marriage rites are. And as all events that invoke the spirit of the living God are. On behalf of the then smaller and somewhat quieter Greta, with her parents and sister and sponsor, we rehearsed on her behalf our own commitment, which we pray and encourage to be her commitment, responding to this important question among other questions. Do you intend to live among God's faithful people? To hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper. To proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed. To serve all people following the example of Jesus. And to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. I want you to say while muted. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me right now. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I want to emphasize today that living into baptismal promises, that saying, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me, can be a daily pledge particularly that striving for justice and peace in all the earth part. This is living into and out of baptism. 
This is indicative of Jesus' own baptism. Not only that he consented to John's invitation to take the plunge into the Jordan and hear me, not just to toe in the water, but a deep dive into the river to signal that this baptism of repentance business is against powers and principalities. Jesus' course is set at that moment and ongoing to be epic. And all those others like us that are immersed in baptism and chrismated with the Spirit have entered into a radical community. Radical from the word meaning root, radix, or systematically and wholly committed to new life at all costs. This community, this beloved community is beyond political polarities and tribalism. It is countercultural and cross-cultural. We make a claim that Black Lives Matter because it is a radical statement against perpetual racism that is built into our country's system. At times and places, both legal and illegal, both explicit and implicit, From the time that slavery began to our very day, that has said that indeed black lives do not matter, that they are not completely citizens nor children of God, that they ought not vote or have access to vote, that they ought not receive equal medical care, that they cannot protest without impunity. Like Jesus, we stand with the persecuted and disenfranchised because of our baptisms. In my most favorite gospel of Mark, from the verses today in the first chapter, it seems as if John is the star of the show. You heard me right. John is performing baptisms for the crowds in the Judean desert outside Jerusalem. The gospel writer makes a big deal out of John's wardrobe, his prophetic appearance, his call to the water for repentance and forgiveness, and finally, his very stylized deference for the one who is to come after. A very Hebraic phrase. I am unworthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. How low can you go, John? But watch for the Spirit with Jesus. Watch how the Spirit accompanies Jesus. How this holy bird recalls movement of creation over turbulent waters and brings forth the entire universe, the stars and planets, the oceans and the mountains, the creatures and the human experiment, something new and good and brimming with promise. This is the same spirit that we called down on Greta nine years ago. That we call down on those who want to enter or affirm the life of faith at the great vigil of Easter. 
The same spirit that is oiled on those in all sorts of sickness. The same spirit that comes down whenever and wherever those who say, I do. And I ask God to help and guide me as we strive for justice and peace in all the earth. John is the one who initially gardens attention to himself in Mark just outside the holy city of Jerusalem. But Jesus, by contrast, comes out of nowhere, literally. Nazareth in Galilee might be better called Nowheresville. Mark loves to talk about John's camel hair outfit and his locust and wild honey diet, but it doesn't say anything about what Jesus wears or eats. The only credentials we hear is that Jesus came out of nowhere, Nazareth in Galilee, despised by the properly religious as a place crawling with outsiders, Gentiles, predominantly poor, and not part of the system. And at this event, as Jesus comes out of the water, we see a cataclysm. The fabric of the skies is torn. And we might now recall the prophet Isaiah, chapter 64. Oh, that you would tear the heavens open and come down and make known your name to your enemies and make the nations tremble at your presence, working unexpected miracles such as no one has ever heard before. And we might remember the tearing at the end of Jesus' life, where the curtain from the temple is torn from the top to the bottom, another cataclysm, as if God goes to the very terror and suffering of all those in Nowheresville or New Haven, in a worsening pandemic, in the chaos and turbulence of political transitions, to any in trouble who think they can't get any lower and says, enough. I will go to wherever you go and redeem you, even if it is to the grave. Watch for the company that Jesus keeps throughout the gospel. Let us be in that company, in good company, whenever and wherever new life is longed for. Let us rejoice in the promise and challenge that is in the beloved community. And in this beloved community, in our longing for good governance, in our renunciation of fear mongering and conspiracy theories, and in our saddling up to holy mystery, looking for a break in the clouds and hearing the voice that says, you are my beloved children. On you, my favor rests. Amen.
On this feast of the baptism of our Lord, let us offer our prayers for all in need, responding to each petition with words from today's psalm. Give us your blessings of peace. For the worldwide church, for those who minister in the church, for all who will be baptized this year, and for their godparents and sponsors. For Greta Lee, as she grows in faith and wisdom, who marks this feast as her baptismal anniversary, that the Holy Spirit will empower all the faithful for lives of service. Let us pray. O oh God, give strength to your people. Give us, give us your us blessings, blessings of, of peace. peace. For the waters of the earth, for the seas, the lakes, the rivers, for the wells that provide drinking water, and for the water that is piped into our homes, that God provide clean and nourishing water for all living things, let us pray. O oh God, give strength to your people. Give, give us your blessings of peace. For the nations of the world and their leaders, for the United States in the midst of unrest and turmoil, after the breach of the Capitol this past Wednesday, for our elected leaders and their families, for peacemakers and justice seekers, and for health of relationships with our nation, other nations, that God fill us with courage and strength for these days, let us pray. O oh God, give strength to your people. Give, give us your blessings of peace. For our nation facing the evil of white supremacy, fear-mongering, and conspiracy theories, for those lured by hatred and violence, for all dealing with new and lasting trauma, for prophets who proclaim uncomfortable truths, that as your beloved creation, God inspire all people to work for the harmonious well-being of others. O oh God, give strength to your people. Give us your blessings of peace. For students, for teachers and school administrators, for Michaela Natal at the awarding of her graduate degree, and as she pursues her vocation in speech pathology, for parents assisting their children in homeschooling, and for young people who are finding a way toward graduation, that as the academic year resumes, God give resilience to everyone in the search for education. Let us pray. O oh God, give strength to your people. Give, give us, us your blessings of peace. For all who are in trouble, want, or sickness, for the countless who are suffering with COVID-19, for medical workers, for people who are hungry or homeless, imprisoned or lonely, especially Tord Johnson, Claire Johnson's brother, and George Arndt, Lynn Arazzini's father, and for those others we name here. Pastor Bud Myers. My father. That God grant health and wholeness to a world so filled with pain, let us pray. Give us. O oh God, give strength to your people. Give us, give us the your blessing of, of peace. peace. For Bethesda's community of faith, that we rejoice in our adoption as members of God's family and that we join in solidarity to serve with those in need through Iris, Abraham's Tent, the Downtown Evening Soup Kitchen, CCA, and our Companion Senate in the Holy Land. Let us pray. O oh God, give strength to your people. Give, give us, us your, your blessing. blessing of peace. Peace. In gratitude for our beloved dead, especially those that come to mind today. We offer our praise 
for all the baptized who have accompanied us and supported us and taught us throughout our days, that at our end we join with them in everlasting joy. Let us pray. O oh God, give strength to your people. Give, give us, us your, your blessing of peace. Almighty and most merciful God, you are the mighty voice from heaven. You are our beloved Savior. You are the descending dove. We give you thanks for all your goodness and tender mercies, and we ask you to accept our prayers for the sake of your mercy today and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with, also with you. Please share a sign of Christ's peace on your screens to one another. Out or with peace. gestures. Peace. 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 And let us prepare for communion. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace. peace everybody. Peace. We're here somewhere. Peace. 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 Take the lid off. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us get, let it lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right. right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, mighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved child, and in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, saying together, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord, God of God, 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 power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Blessed in the name of the Lord, done in the highest. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, you we praise and glorify, you we worship and adore. You formed the earth from chaos, you encircled the globe with air, you created fire for warmth and light, you nourish the lands with water. You molded us in your image and with mercy higher than the mountains, with grace deeper than the seas. You bless the Israelites and cherish them as your own. That also we, estranged and dying, might be adopted to live in your spirit. You call to us through the life and death of Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together as the body of Christ, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your son, the firstborn of your new creation. We remember his life lived for others and his death and resurrection, which is the face of the earth. We await his coming, when with the world made perfect through your wisdom, all our sins and sorrows will be no more. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, holy and merciful one, holy and compassionate, send upon us and this meal your Holy Spirit, whose breath revives us for life, whose fire rouses us to love. 
and fold in your arms all who share this holy food. Nurture in us the fruits of the Spirit, that we may be a living tree, sharing your bounty with all the world. Amen. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy and benevolent God, receive our praise and petitions as Jesus received the cry of the needy. And fill us with your blessing until needy no longer and bound to you in love. We feast forever in the triumph of the Lamb, through whom all glory and honor is yours. O oh, oh God, O oh living one, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever, and let the people say, Amen. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. Your will, will be done. Be done. On earth, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And deliver us from the time of trial. And deliver us from the evil forever. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now is the time when we will be put into breakout rooms to give and receive Holy Communion. You should have your bread and wine available or juice. Or whatever. There'll be two or three or some households or individuals in each room. Greet one another, learn each other's names if you do not know them. Decide who will speak first and then second and third and then say the words in turn name, body of Christ, given for you, consuming the bread, name, blood of Christ, shed for you, consuming uh, the wine. You may bring yourselves back to the group at any time or wait until you are brought back. And if you are not receiving, you may wait in the plenary room with music, meditation, music, playing, and to know this blessing. God of the nations, you hold the earth into a single piece. You pronounce creation good and you renew the face of the waters. Send your spirit on those who are unable to receive the gift of bread and wine today, they, that they might know your unbounded grace and favor. Through Jesus Christ, your beloved. Amen. Amen. Beloved who are here, here is bread, here is wine, here is Jesus. Come and be fed. Let us speak together the Lamb of God. Lamb of God. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sin of the world. Lamb of God, take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Amen. Amen.
God of all our days, we long for the day when we will again be able to gather in one room around one table, sharing this meal in person. Bring that day soon. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ, at this table we have feasted on your very life and are strengthened for our journey. Send us forth from this banquet, nourishing, nourished in body and in spirit, to proclaim your good news and serve others in your name. Amen. Friends, uh, fellowship time will follow. Um, you, you may wish to excuse yourself and come back, or you can stay on if, if you have coffee or whatever available. We are glad to live out our baptismal calling to serve our neighbor. Dan Courtright, please tell us about yesterday's project begun by children and youth and adults yesterday on behalf of Columbus House and Abraham's Tent. Sure. Um, so as you all probably know or could guess, uh, we're not able to do Abraham's Tent this year. Uh, we just can't have men in the facility. Uh, but that doesn't mean that homelessness is not a problem. In fact, um, one of the things that I've worried about since March is that when we received orders to all shelter at home or stay home, um, there are those in our community who do not have a home to shelter in. And so I was, it was with some um, disappointment that I heard that we wouldn't sort of concluded that we wouldn't be able to uh, shelter men uh, with us as we've had, we have in the past. Uh, but um, Vicar Maeve uh, gave a little bit of inspiration here and thought that we could involve the youth in a way to support the men who are being sheltered at uh, Columbus House this winter. So with a lot of coordination and elbow grease from Vicar Maeve, uh, we put together uh, a group yesterday uh, to prepare snack bags, uh, a brown paper bag. Uh, the sort of, I guess the inspiration this of the, for this has to go to the Girl Scout troop up in Hamden, who years ago came up with the idea of sending the men from our shelter situation out to their day uh, with a little brown paper bag with snacks in it. So we essentially created that for the 42 men who are expected to be in the main shelter all winter. And we made enough of them, 420, uh, so that we can take a, uh, a set of snack bags for every man in the main shelter every week for the next 10 weeks. Inside that bag are several uh, snacks, um, non-perishable type snacks with a little handwritten note. Yes, we hand wrote 420 uh, notes yesterday. And there are also in almost all of the bags, there's uh, a personal care item. So some examples would be things like a, a comb or nail clippers or a washcloth or socks. Um, again, uh, a lot of that was purchased, that, that's really all been purchased with money that people have donated to the church for Abraham's tent. So thank you to those of you who donated. And we actually had so much uh, material to donate that we're also going to be making an additional donation of snacks and personal items uh, to Columbus House for the overflow shelter, which is housing 30 uh, homeless uh, men uh, during the winter. So, um, you know, this, uh, we're able to help these people who need our help uh, even though we have all the restrictions from the pandemic and it's thanks to uh, the vicar and her crew uh, that we were able to do it in about two and a half hours. It was an impressive feat. Thanks, Dan. And uh, partial funding has also come through a Thrivent uh, Action or Care Team grant. And I uh, have some wonderful photos so that we'll be posting some of those. Um, we rejoice with Michaela Natal as she received her master's degree from Southern Connecticut State University last month in communications disorders. Last week, 
Uh, she began a fellowship at a school in Woodbridge. So congratulations, Michaela, which means we give thanks together. Is she here? Oh, well, we give thanks whether she's here or not. Tonight at seven o'clock, I'm ho hosting a Zoom gathering that was to begin conversation on small group gatherings each Sunday. In light of uh, last week's event, uh, particularly uh, at the Capitol, I'm inviting those coming to glean from the ELCA social message on government and civic engagement. In addition, we will plan for future Sunday small groups and to pray. Dinner Church begins a new series uh, this Wednesday at six o'clock based on Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Services resource called On the Move, reflecting on passages from the book of Exodus as they intersect with migration issues of today. And uh, Vicar May would like to speak to the survey that uh, has been sent out. Yes, you should have all received by email and by mail a survey from Bethesda. Um, we are trying to get some information from you on how you're being cared for, your current situation, and if you're able to worship with us on Sunday mornings. So if you all would please fill them out and return them back to us, um, either fill out the Google form or fill out the paper copy and mail it back to us. If you're mailing it, please include your name somewhere on the form or in the um, return address on the envelope, just so we know who it is from. Thank you. And finally, Sunday, January 31st, at the fellowship time, Bethesda will hold its annual meeting on Zoom with presentations on our various ministries and action items, including elections to council, the Mission Endowment Fund, audit and nominating committees, seeking a seminary intern for 2021-2022, and a spending plan for 2021. We'll have a great time, even though we can't have food together. <laughs> Happy New Year. Uh, it's been uh, great for me to spend some time away. Uh, and uh, it's great to see all of you today. Please receive the blessing. God, the creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Richard? Diane? Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks, Thanks to God. Thanks to God. Thanks.